This is Belgrade, the capital of Serbia. I travelled here in winter after I heard that football in Serbia was intrinsically linked to the war. Here at the 60th anniversary of the club, former players from six decades are remembering the glory days. Fifteen years ago in 1991, and just 12 months before the war broke out, Red Star Belgrade reached the European Cup final in Italy. He scores. They beat Olympic Marseille to win the cup for the very first time. The European Cup also gave the world its first glimpse of the Red Star fans in action. Their home is the north bank of Red Star Stadium. On these terraces, they stay some of the most dramatic displays of football support seen anywhere in the world. Tickets for this match were sold out in five hours and they could have filled this stadium three times over. No Yugoslavian side has ever won the Champions Cup, but you won't convince anyone of this crowd in Belgrade tonight that Red Star are not on their way to the final this year and that they'll be successful. The atmosphere is fantastic. For 15 years, Zoran Avramovic has been the chief executive of the club. Through war and peace, he's seen things most football managers can scarcely imagine. And he knows all too well the power of the fans. Has to do something with all this. But they also have a reputation for being the most violent fans in Europe. I didn't think I'd get to see them in action when the Red Star game I had tickets for was snowed off. But it didn't matter. Red Star isn't just a football club. It has 27 different sports teams, and tonight there's a basketball game. Inside and out of the cold. It's against their arch rivals, Partizan Belgrade. In Serbia, even basketball games need hundreds of police in full riot gear. Nobody seemed at all interested in the game, and I can't remember who actually won. But the singing was loud, vicious and constant for over three uninterrupted hours. The Serbs claim to be the greatest hooligans in the world because they're more violent than the English and better choreographed than the Italians. A former leader of the Red Star fans, Zoran Timic, claims that what happens at these matches is far more sophisticated than it first appears. When the club was established after World War II, there was a communist regime in power in Yugoslavia. It was forbidden to show your true feelings in any circumstances. Somehow supporting Red Star meant you were showing resistance to the regime. It was the only way you could show it in those days. The wars that soon followed presented armed robber Jelko Rajnatovic, better known as Arkan, with a perfect opportunity. With his own band of paramilitaries, Arkan ethnically cleansed his way around Croatia and Bosnia, gaining wealth and fame along the way. In 1993 he went into politics, starting the Serbian Unity Party. Why should I give a damn? I have one judge, God and the Serbian people. We didn't do not one uh, crime. So why should I give a damn? Before the war, Arkan had been strategically placed at Red Star as president of its fan club. He was in the perfect position to monitor the notoriously troublesome fans and to get some new recruits. Arkan named his paramilitary army the Tigers and many of them came straight from the terraces of Red Star. Although Arkan claimed that all they did was defend Serbia, the Tigers committed some of the worst atrocities of the whole conflict. In 1997, Arkan was indicted for war crimes.
the Red Star supporters lost in the fighting are remembered on the walls of Belgrade. These are today's leaders of the Red Star fans. <laughs> So is it true that some of the, <laughs> some of the toughest <laughs> supporters <laughs> yes, were selected and supposed, yes, uh, many of them is, uh, was a leader, leader on, on our uh, side. And they had reputations here yes, yes. for being very yes, tough. Very, very so then yes. they were trained into soldiers. But they, they, uh, they was not uh, a criminal, criminals. They, they are uh, just a regular guy who like uh, our club. But they were well known for being good fighters. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and is it true that they took the toughest of the supporters and made them into soldiers? Uh, something like that, yes. Are they all his friends? Not that he misused them and, and you know, used the violence. At that moment he came and he became the one. Right? But, but how do the Red Star fans remember him today? We respect him, he is dead, and that's, it's stupid to talk about that. Uh, they will take us to the newspaper, they are a Red Star newspaper, a Red Star Review, because uh, there is a lot of pictures. This is the north bank of Red Star Belgrade, it actually says heroes on the seats. Um, Arkan was the leader of the heroes, so we asked them about their relationship with Arkan. Um. But those who ordered the killings are still at large, and that probably explains everybody's silence. Although I couldn't feel much sympathy for Red Star's hooligans 